Hello and welcome to another session in physics. In this session, we will be looking at the topic surface tension. But before that, let us review the previous lesson. Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll be talking about surface tension more extensively than we did in our previous lesson. We'll be looking at it as the property that a liquid possesses, though we talked about it last time. It is the property that a liquid possesses that makes its surface behave as though it is being covered by an elastic skin. Talking about elastic skin, think about something like a drum. Seen some of these drums that are used traditionally in the traditional setting where there are festivals and then people have to beat them. They are made from animal skin. They are stretched. If you pour water on top of these drums, it is not going to penetrate. Nothing will happen to it because it is covered by an, an elastic skin. So this elasticity property that some surfaces be, behave like or exhibit is what we call surface tension. Interestingly too, we see this property in liquids, not just in solids. Because when it comes to these drums, these drums are solids in nature. But let's talk about the surface tension, the elasticity that liquids possess. Now, when you go to the borehole to fetch water sometimes, or you go to the tap to fetch some water, you would notice that when the tap is switched off, there are some droplets of water that tend to come off as the tap stops running. Now these droplets, droplets of water, they don't, don't just drop by like particles of stone, not at all. They drop in form of spheres, spheres that are stretched. That's how they drop. Look at the diagram here. Or sometimes when it has rained, one rainy morning like that and as the rain has stopped and then you have to go under a tree and notice how droplets of water are dropping from the leaves of that tree or from the leaves of a flower. Notice and look at the point of contact between the water and the leaf itself and you notice that they are just not in tandem with each other. One seems to be stretching while the other seems to be letting go. Alright, so we say that surface tension also is the force per unit length of a material. Force per unit length of a material. The surface tension is given by this Y here and force per unit length of the material F over 2L as you can see from the slide here. We also define surface tension as the force that is acting parallel to the surface of a liquid. The force that is acting parallel to the surface of a liquid and that's what makes it drop the way it does. Now, we also talked about the effects of surface tension in our previous lesson and let's go over through it once again. Take a look at this man in this image here. You'll notice that this man is engaging in a sport we call skiing. Skiing or um, sea diving. Sea skin or jet skin is a sport that takes place on the water where they have to use their skating board. This skating board, they stand on it and they try to ride the waves. Now, what is it that helps them to be able to balance firmly on this water without sinking? That is a property that water possesses as surface tension. Surface tension sometimes also enables some materials to be able to float gently on top of the water. Materials like a cloth, you can place a cloth, a piece of clothing on um, top of water and you notice that after some time this water begins to float. The cloth begins to float on top of the water. And you'd also notice that if you were to drop something like a razor blade or a needle gently on the surface of the water, it's also definitely going to float. When we spill mercury, even though it's expensive, you spill mercury on a surface made of glass, it is going to form spherical droplets. Because you know, mercury does not wet glass. Mercury does not wet glass. 
So because of that, it will form spherical droplets. It will more like withdraw into different particles and separate itself from the glass surface. One of the applications is in the construction of things that help to protect us from rain, such as umbrellas, our rain coats, waterproof materials. Waterproof materials, the application of surface tension is made evident. Also, when you use ink on a blotting paper, the application of surface tension is also made evident. Alternatively too, you can also see how oil rises in lamp wicks. Some of us make use of this uh, traditional lanterns where uh, it's made of a container with the kerosene inside it and it's carried like a cup and there is something like a thread which is a wick. So how the oil rises, how it taps from the kerosene around here and then it has to rise and give power to the flame is an application of surface tension. Also, how melted wax moves on the neck of a burning candle. This is a burning candle for instance. And then um, wax melts due to the application of heat. Heat coming from the flames of the candle. The melting of this wax, look at its motion. How it moves into the neck of the burning candle is also an application of surface tension. How it sticks to the neck of the burning candle. At this point, let's talk about capillarity. Capillarity. Capillarity is simply defined as the tendency, the likelihood of liquids to rise or fall in narrow capillary tubes. What you see here is an example of a capillary tube. Capillary tube. This is water, H2O, and this is mercury, HG. These are their nomenclature that is given to them, IUPAC nomenclature that is given to mercury and water. Alright, so in a capillary tube, water tends to elevate itself, water tends to rise. Look at its level here, look at its level here, it tends to rise, but look at mercury. Mercury tends to be depressed, it tends to be depressed. Each liquid put inside the capillary tube has its own tendency either to rise or fall in this narrow capillary tube. This is as a result of the balance between surface tension and forces of adhesion or cohesion. Now that we've mentioned its forces of adhesion and cohesion, also known as cohesive force and adhesive force, what is the difference between two of them? Well, when we talk about cohesive force, we are talking about the force of attraction that exists between molecules of the same substance. So let's say water molecules now, water for instance known as H2O, two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen gives us what we call water. Now the interaction between this water and let's say this water is inside a cup for instance now. This is the handle of the cup. Alright, when you try to pour this water away from the cup, you would notice something that there will be some particles of water still left inside this cup. Some particles, some molecules of this water will stick to the cup, especially if it's a glass cup. So for you to be able to wipe the glass clean, you would have to use a piece of clothing or other material in order to wipe the molecules that have stuck to the body of this glass and make them free from all molecules of water. But that is not what happens if it is mercury. Let's say this is glass for instance and inside this glass there is mercury inside it. Now you would notice that when you try to pour this mercury away, nothing will stick to the body of this glass cup. The reason for that is because mercury molecules and glass molecules do not attract each other. Mercury molecules have a stronger force of attraction between themselves than mercury molecules and glass molecules. So because of that, mercury molecules will prefer to stick to their fellow mercury mo molecules and not stick to the glass. For that reason, mercury does not wet glass and that is the reason why water wets glass. In Wayek, you will probably see a question like, why does water wet glass while mercury does not wet glass? Remember, we said water wets glass. 
because the forces of attraction between water molecules is weaker than the forces of attraction between water and glass molecules. So, back to what we're trying to say, we said cohesive forces are the forces of attraction between molecules of the same substance. So, water has molecules of the same substance. But water and glass are two different substances and they have molecules of different substance. Now, adhesive force is the force of attraction between molecules of different substance. Or we say it is the force which makes molecules of different substance to get attracted to each other. So, put simply, the reason why water wets glass and mercury does not wet glass is because the force of adhesion between water and glass molecules is stronger than the force of cohesion between water and water molecules. I'll take that again. The reason why water wets glass and mercury does not wet glass is because the force of adhesion, the adhesive force between water and glass molecules is stronger than the cohesive force between water and water molecules. So for that reason, water tends to stick to glass more than water sticks to its fellow water molecules. On the other hand, mercury does not wet glass because the force of cohesion between mercury and mercury molecules is stronger than the adhesive force between mercury and glass molecules. So that is the basic difference between cohesive forces and adhesive forces. Thank you so very much for joining us in this lesson and to refresh your memory on what we've just discussed, please take the test that will appear on your screen.